Dr. John Campbell, with his 2 million plus strong YouTube audience, mentioned this matter quite recently. And more recently again, Toby Young on his London Calling podcast, which he shares with a delinquent buddy and damages his professional reputation for reasons I cannot even begin to fathom, saw the matter raised also by said delinquent buddy, not by Toby Young, obviously, so I thought it might be a good time to clear this matter up. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the charge is that Matt Hancock, in his role as health secretary, oversaw the overprescription of the sedative drug midazolam to care home patients, and it was this drug, and not COVID, that killed all the people during the last two years. This is the charge which I will dismantle in a very short order. And why Dr. John Campbell did not do so when he had access to and was looking at the exact same data as I will be looking at is the question which is currently running through my head and I will come back to that. You'll recognise this as a chart of the deaths we saw over the last three years in two main peaks in 20 and 21. Please would you note the following. Peak 1, April 2020, peak 2, January 21, and also that point there at the end of last year. Yes, I know there are barely any deaths there because Covid was done and dusted at that point, but my reasons will become clear. So, three points, April 2020, January 21, and December last year. In terms of their severity, the second was the highest and contained most deaths, the first was second, and that most recent non-peak is the lowest. Nothing much there at all. That is the very brief part one as a reminder, and now on to the midazolam prescriptions. I'll put this link in the description box. Bear in mind the Covid period starting point is there. This chart starts in 2018. I'll get rid of the title for more room. So, the three points you saw on the death's peak chart are April 2020, January 21, and December 22. In April 2020, there is an increase in midazolam prescriptions to the tune of about almost double previous levels. Two things to say here. It is only doubling. Doubling is not insignificant, but it's not quadrupling or quintupling or anything like that. And also, it's not out of the blue. Midazolam was being consistently prescribed prior to that, just at a lower level. Nonetheless, there is a correlation. Most people would happily accept that the reason for the increase was to help the suffering COVID patients. Whether rightly or wrongly, I don't pronounce an opinion on whether or not it was a good idea, but that would have been the reason. However, the case for the prosecution here is it was actually the midazolam that caused the deaths. This is easily shown to be false. So that's the first one. This one then is the point in January 21, the biggest peak of all, and here any correlation ends because there is no increase in prescription here. Just a tiny, 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 tiny increase. Hardly any at all, but that is the point of the big deaths peak. Just to repeat that, that point, where there is barely any midazolam increase in prescription, corresponds to that extreme peak in deaths. Since there is no midazolam increase in prescription, a point I should add entirely overlooked by the good Dr. Campbell, if midazolam had been the causal factor, what you would have been seeing is that. Tiny deaths increase to correspond to the marginally increased midazolam, but what there actually is, is that. So to make this odd hypothesis, you have to work the rather tortuous route of, well, the first lot was down to the midazolam, and the second lot was down to... Well, something else, because it can't have been the midazolam, because there was no increase in prescription, which is just plain silly. But remember I said, look right at the end as well. That big second peak, where there was only a marginal midazolam increase, it was ticking along at pretty much the usual background level, it can then be compared to December last, where there were barely any deaths. Pretty damn hardcore mortality difference, right? Okay, back we go. So now we're looking at this point. You can see that the midazolam prescription has edged up steadily into the winter, and it looks to be pretty much on a par with January 21, where we had that big death's peak. It looks to be about identical, and to be accurate, let's check out all the regions. And so, southeast, that's the one where we do have a squeak upwards in January 21, 6,500 items. December last year, 5,400, so that one was a bit lower recently. 
Midlands, January 21, 6,000. End of last year, 6,300. So here they were prescribing more midazolam at the end of last year compared to that early 21 big peak. The northeast, I've noted that one for the month previously, to be scrupulously honest, because that was the prescription peak, 5,700. December last year, 5,400, a fraction lower. Southwest, January 21, 4,600. December 22, 4,400. So again, just a fraction lower. The east, January 20. 4,600, December 22, 3,900, so a fair bit lower there. Northwest, January 21, 4,100, December last year, 4,200. So here again, they were actually prescribing a little bit more midazolam in December last year compared to that January 21 peak. And London, you can see it's actually pretty much identical in both, difference of just one prescription. If you add up all the midazolam prescriptions, both at the peak in January 21 and in December just gone, December 22 is fully 95% the amount of prescriptions of that big peak in January 21. They're pretty much identical. The amount of midazolam that was being prescribed here at the peak of deaths was barely greater than the amount being prescribed here at almost the lowest point of deaths. Why was not Mad Matt's murderous midazolam killing at the same rate in December 22 as it was in the peak in January 21, given that the prescription amounts were largely identical? Because it wasn't the midazolam. And if it had been, and if we take the first peak as our baseline, you wouldn't be looking at a mortality timeline like this, it'd look like that. Largish peak to start, fading away a little bit, and then ticking along at pretty much that same level. Because that, what you're looking at there, is consistent with the midazolam prescription levels. If it was this drug, you would have been looking at that kind of catastrophic mortality rather than what we actually saw. Or lower mortality, or higher even, but with peaks and troughs consistent with the midazolam prescription. Prescription. So, of course, the explanation, which is totally consistent with that, is that they'd been prescribing midazolam for years at a certain level, then along comes COVID, they start to increase the prescription initially somewhat, and then, for whatever reason, they stop increasing it and it slides back to the usual background level, which is exactly what you see there. Totally consistent with all of that. Consistent because there is no causal correlation. And for good measure, I've put them both back to back here. Mortality on the top, midazolam underneath. I've matched the two timelines pretty much exactly. Question, and I've asked this question before. Do you like being lied to? Do you like being lied to more than you like me telling you that you're being lied to and showing you the evidence when the lies align with your hopes, dreams, preconceptions and biases. Because if you do, you are lost, you are kaput, because that is the definition of insanity. And why did Dr. John Campbell, with his 2 million plus strong YouTube audience, Mr. Mr. Establishment Stooge, do you remember that little doggy on the windowsill with this little face mask on it? Where in the hell do you find a toy dog with a face mask? And his board behind, with all the establishment propaganda, social distancing, two metres distance, face mask, wash your hands and all that. Mr. Establishment, Pro uh, Mr. Establishment Stooge turned the most inconceivable establishment critic over the course of just two years. What a heck of a change that was. Absolutely nothing wrong with changing your mind. I've done it many times myself. But that was one hell of a switcheroo. Why did, why did he fail to mention any of this beyond the initial correlation with zero comment on the rest of the data, which obviously exculpates Midaslam from the ridiculous murder charge? I cannot begin to imagine. I do know, however, that conspiracy content is very popular. I do know that darkly hinting at potential midazolam malfeasance is an awful lot more exciting than, well, they just prescribed sedatives pretty much as they were prescribing them before. And people are getting on in life, the wife keeps telling you to put the rubbish out, you can't bleed and stand the woman, and logging on to the internet to read about the latest global conspiracy to commit, commit mass murder with midazolam doesn't half relieve the tedium. It's just not real. If you prioritise that sense of fantasy, sense of excitement, then okay. But the downside is it's not real. 
and if, after taking a good look at the timelines and quantities of drug prescription and claimed deaths due to said drug, if you are still foaming at the nostrils, insisting that the evidence of your own eyes, which you have just seen in this video, is actually false, and I am a controlled opposition paid for by Bill Gates and Pfizer, then there is nothing I can do for you. I should add that I am available for purchase to the highest bidder. Hasn't happened yet, probably won't happen, but you never know. If, on the other hand, uh, you appreciate this dose of reality, can I request a little like placed on the video and maybe a share here or there? It never hurts.